Hello, my name is Nathaniel, your 3D CG guru, and in this video series we're going to be looking at the Trim Sheet Maker Pro and talking about its features and how to use those features. So to begin with, I have this Substance Designer graph already set up. I have my uh, node already, my SBAR file already loaded into Designer, and I have some example uh, materials we're going to work with. I got these materials for free right off of Substance Source. If you're unfamiliar with how to get the SBAR loaded into Designer, what I would recommend doing is actually creating a folder. Uh, in my case, I name my folder library and putting your SBAR file into there. So here I have library and I have my SBAR file. And then inside of Designer, you can go to your preferences, you can go to projects, and in projects you'll find a library. You can just hit the add button, find that uh, library folder that you have, and just select that folder, and that should load up. From there, we can simply go over to our library and just do a search for TSM, and we should find that node. Depending on what version of the Trim Sheet Maker Pro you're using, it may say, you know, TSM free or standard or pro. The pro version gives us all of the features so we're going to work with Pro in this video series. And, and for my mode, I just have it set to simple, which is essentially the same as the free version of the SBAR file. Uh, now, when we select this node, right away you'll notice we can choose how many materials we want to add to this trim sheet. In the simple mode, you can have up to eight. And we can also choose our tile direction. So we'll see an example of that in a moment. Below that, we have our list of what channels do we want to be able to connect into this trim sheet. And if we hit one on our keyboard, we can see those inputs right here. And the list of potential inputs just match what the standard ones are that you find within Designer. So I'm not going to change these for this demo because everything's set up the way I want. And um, the input list can look quite large. So I like to hit three on my uh, keyboard just to minimize the uh, connection mode. Below that, we have the materials. So if in this case right now, I have two input materials and one output. So I have two input materials here. So let's go ahead and just take uh, the first material here and I'm going to hook it into this graph. And there we go, we get this in my viewport. Now what I can do at this point is I can simply just use the reduce slider to reduce this. And I'm going to just temporarily load up the, uh, the base material here into the, uh, into the 2D view here. I need to double click on that, not drag and drop. Okay, so uh, we can see here we simply do one... Um, reduction and that will reduce the resolution in half and so everything in this slider is always done by powers of two making sure that that fits nicely with your tileable patterns I can go in here again and I can just add a additional material here and it's going to by default not do any type of reduction so I'd want to um, where it has one reduction level here if I wanted to give myself more space I could do the adjustment like so uh, a reduction value of zero really doesn't make sense we would want that if we had uh, no other material fill in this, the scene. So material two starts with a reduction of, of one by default. Now, if I want to uh, blend more materials together, simply just go up to the number of materials and increase this to whatever the material count is that you need. Now, what we can do with this is we could go ahead and add a third material here, like so, and then I'm going to give my... Uh, my trim sheet some space for this third material. So now I go ahead and reduce the size of my second material here. One of the features of the Trim Sheet Maker Pro is the ability to support rectangular textures in there. So I'm going to take just this basic uh, example uh, image here and I'm going to feed this in as my third material. So now I go ahead and expand and see all the inputs and I'm just going to hook this into my base color and then let's go see what this looks like. So here we go. Now you'll notice that that pattern right now is being clipped off. So we need to go down there and actually reduce this material. And at this point, if we look at this pattern versus the source image, there's a discrepancy. Essentially the letter A is being squished. So by default, uh, the Trim Maker Pro assumes that the input materials coming in are rectangular, or sorry, are square. In this case, it's not, it's rectangular. So we need to compensate for that in the settings. So let's go in there, we're gonna to go to material three, and I'm just gonna specify that this particular pattern needs to actually be wider. So if we take the slider here for the height and we drag it to the left, it will widen out the texture. Uh, so we're gonna go just one step here. And if we were to go the other way, if we had a rectangular texture that is taller, we would essentially wanna specify it's taller in that direction. So your 
you're going to specify the direction in which you need it to expand. So now we get this properly tiling on the bottom of the trim sheet. Uh, going back up to the top, now if I'm wanting to change the orientation of this, I can just switch this over to vertical. Everything is in a change. We can see here the letter A is <clears throat> not really going to be the best here just because of this rectangular texture not really being designed to go vertical in that case. So those are the basic features of uh, the free or simple mode of the Trim Sheet Maker Pro. In the next video, we will take a look at what the standard mode gets us.